OK, I'm going to give you a quick rundown of how you can easily create seamless textures in the iPad version of Affinity Photo. So I just took this photo of a ground texture on my camera phone and I've just imported it without any further adjustments. Now the first thing I want to do is crop the image to a one by one aspect ratio. So I'll select the crop tool from the tools on the left here and under mode I'll tap the option and choose custom ratio. Okay, so then all we need to do is tap X, set it to 1, tap Y, and set it to 1, then tap off to commit it. Okay, so just to commit the crop we can go ahead and tap the check icon. Now the next step is quite important. I'm going to go to the document menu here and choose flatten and this will rasterize and flatten the document. Now we need to do this because we're going to offset the edges of the image and by default cropping is non-destructive. So before we flattened the document the areas that we cropped out still existed. Now we don't want to expose those areas hidden by cropping the canvas so therefore we just flatten and rasterize and we're left with just what we see on screen. OK, so then we need to offset the edges of the image. Now to do this in Affinity Photo we need a filter called Affine. So under the Filters Studio here, there we go, right at the top, I'll tap Affine. And Offset X and Offset Y down here, we want to set those to, if I just tap Offset X, 50. And Offset Y, 50. There we go. And I can go ahead and tap the check to apply that. Now then, we have a variety of tools at our disposal to basically make these areas seamless. People tend to favour using the clone brush, but I'm going to show you a slightly different method. If I tap the clone brush on the tools here, and then tap it again to expose the flyout, I'm going to choose the patch tool instead. OK, so the way this works is we draw an area that we want to patch or heal. So for example, I'm going to draw out this area. Then what we need to do is tap drag inside the area we've just selected. That's crucial. And what we can do is drag around the canvas to choose a suitable replacement. And Although it doesn't look as seamless as it should in the preview, if we actually release, like so, and then tap away, we'll see the blending here is actually quite good. So let's go ahead and repeat this procedure. I'll just draw out another area here, and I can tap inside and drag to, let's try this and then just simply tap away anywhere on the canvas to commit that. I'm not actually happy with that, it looks a bit blurry. So I can undo until I get back to this point, so I get to keep my selection, and then I can just, let's sample a wider area here, and I'll just tap drag again and go right across until I find something like maybe this. OK, and then tap off. Good, OK, so we can continue. And I'll just select this area. Mm, let's see. I'll tap, drag again and go up here maybe. And the beauty of this is you can just pan around with your finger or pencil until you find something that looks like it could work, like that. OK, and then just tap off to see the blending applied. Right. So then it's a case of just going around, working your way around with the patch tool, like so. Choose that, and it could get a little tedious, 
me constantly narrating. But I'll just point out anything that I think is worth mentioning additionally. Okay, looking good so far. Whilst I'm doing this actually, I will just tell you about what I intend to do next, which is uh, we'll start to notice there's a bit of a tonal discrepancy here. This area, this upper right quadrant, as it were, is significantly darker than the areas to the bottom and left. So what we will do to try and fix that is some dodging using the dodge brush. We might do some burning as well, but we'll see how the dodging pans out first. Okay. So I'm just going to keep going here. Let's try this area. Okay, nearly there. Right, looking good, I think. Yeah, so dodging and burning to even out the tones. Now, if I select the burn brush on the tools here and then tap it again to expose the flyout, we have access to the dodge brush here. Okay, so I'm going to bump the brush width up. Now, by default, we're at 25% opacity, so we've got mid-tones selected as the range to dodge. So what I'm going to do is just paint over these areas here, and let's just see what we're getting. Okay, so I'll just go over this area again and try and build it up, a bit like layering our brush strokes, really. Hopefully you can see this, it's quite subtle, but I'm just going to dodge around these areas that are noticeably darker. Okay, so we've got this area down here as well. Perhaps this area. I might try moving across to shadows for the range as well and just see if that makes it out. Ah, okay, that's a bit more of a significant difference. There we go. Okay, so it's just the bottom right now. Again, I'll just dodge that like so. And go up here again. Right. So just to highlight what all that dodging has actually done, because I appreciate when you're actually building up the different strokes, it's harder to see. I'm going to move across to the History Studio, and I'm going to step back to where it says Deselect. Okay, so there we go, quite a, a dramatic difference there. If I step all the way back to the last Dodge Brush Tool step, you can see we've lightened all that area to try and make it blend in a bit more seamlessly. Of course, we could go the opposite way. This area is perhaps a little too bright now. So I'll tap the dodge brush to expose the flyout, select the burn brush, and let's see what we want to burn here. Let's try the mid-tones, and we'll just burn those slightly. Perhaps switch the range to highlights down here. No, that's a bit too much. So I'll undo that and maybe just drag the opacity right down to less than 10% and just go over that area a couple of times, like so, just to take the edge off the brightness. Right, I think we've got a fairly decent result. So finally then, what we can do is across on the Filters Studio, we'll tap the Affine filter again and this time we're going to drag offset X and offset Y and we can see in real time as we're offsetting the image. So this is really useful because it should, as we're dragging across, highlight any areas that still have 
a visible seam. And we don't appear to have any, so that is a good sign. OK, I'm going to cancel that filter by tapping the X. And there we go, that's it. We now have our seamless texture ready to export and use in further software and other applications. So, thank you for watching, and don't forget to check out the other video tutorials.